In this lecture, we're going to be looking at the physics of condensation and why water vapor will condense in the first place and why that is thermodynamically um, in the best interest of the droplets, so to speak. <laughs> uh, physics of condensation. Um, we're going to use a new thermodynamic variable. Uh, recall that we've done entropy. Uh, we could have done the Helmholtz function, which we decided not to do. Uh, but in this case, we're going to introduce the Gibbs free energy thermodynamic variable. And the Gibbs free energy per unit mass, because we're in lowercase uh, letters, uh, is defined as the internal energy of the system minus T times the entropy of the system plus P alpha. <coughs> And it's a very useful thermodynamic uh, variable uh, because it helps identify the equilibrium state of the system. And so, and that's an equilibrium state of the system at constant temperature and pressure. And at equilibrium, at constant temperature and pressure, uh, by definition, the uh, differential of the Gibbs free uh, energy function is going to be equal to zero. So that's a big picture. Uh, and we can actually go ahead and expand out the uh, Gibbs free energy uh, by remembering from the first law of thermodynamics that dQ is equal to TdS uh, and that TdS uh, is equal to dU plus alpha dP. We substitute that in, um, the dU terms cancel, dU minus dU, uh, and the alpha dP terms cancel from the positive and the negative leaving that the differential of the Gibbs uh, free energy function is alpha dP minus S dT, where S is the entropy. But we can recall from the uh, ideal gas law that the uh, specific volume is equal to R star T over P. If we substitute that in, we'll end up with this expression, which is equivalent to R star times temperature times the differential of the log of pressure minus S dT. And if we take this system and say that we're talking about water vapor, which is really what we're doing for the condensation process, uh, for water vapor, this generic form of the equation uh, actually turns into dG is equal to R sub V, which is the uh, specific uh, gas constant for water vapor, times temperature, times the differential of the natural log of the water vapor pressure, E, minus S dT. Um, so that was for uh, dG equals to zero, is essentially for an equilibrium condition. Uh, for a non-equilibrium condition, uh, then dG is no longer equal to zero. And that's exactly what we have when we have a supersaturated atmosphere. When the relative humidity of the atmosphere is greater than 100%. Uh, this does occur in the atmosphere, uh, in clouds, inside updrafts. And it's what actually drives the condensation process, is that supersaturation, that non-equilibrium condition. The water droplet actually grows in response to that, trying to eliminate the non-equilibrium condition to get back to equilibrium. And so for this non-equilibrium condition, the actual vapor pressure is going to be greater than the saturation vapor pressure. And when we do that, we actually refer to the vapor pressure as being supersaturated. ESS um, is greater than uh, our saturation vapor pressure. And under this non-equilibrium condition, the Gibbs free energy uh, difference between those two states actually defines how much energy is available to create the surface area of a droplet. If you've ever tried to cut up a carrot, uh, you know that it takes a lot of energy in order to take a long slender carrot and break it up into small bits. Um, it actually takes energy to create surface area. So if you think about an individual droplet, that starts off as a nucleus of a few water molecules. As that water molecule grows, that surface area grows as well. And it takes energy in order to create that interface between the atmosphere and the liquid water. And in order to determine how much energy is actually available for creating that surface area, we're going to integrate uh, the Gibbs free energy function from the Gibbs free energy that's available uh, at saturated conditions 
to the Gibbs-free energy that's available at supersaturated conditions. And so for, um, as we integrate this equation, we have R sub Vt, and we're going from uh, our saturation vapor pressure to our vapor pressure that's available for supersaturated conditions, E sub SS, and then we're going to uh, have minus uh, S, where S is the entropy dt. And the nice thing about the, the physics of condensation is that condensation, in this case, is occurring at a constant temperature process. And so it simplifies our equation. This term actually goes away because the uh, temperature at supersaturation is equal to the temperature at saturation for this case. It simplifies our, our situation. And so the difference uh, between the Gibbs-free energy of our system at supersaturated conditions and the Gibbs-free energy at saturated conditions uh, is then R sub Vt times the natural log of the uh, water vapor pressure at supersaturated conditions and the uh, saturation vapor pressure. Um, but that, recall, is in units of joules per kilogram. And what we really want to know is how much energy is actually available and so what we need to do is we need to transform this from the intensive form of the equation to the extensive form. And the way we do that is that the Gibbs-free energy, uh, which is actually have units of energy and joules at supersaturated conditions is equal to the mass of the droplet times the Gibbs-free energy at supersaturated conditions. And similarly, the Gibbs-free energy at saturated conditions would be the mass of the droplet uh, times the Gibbs-free energy at saturated conditions. And so the, the way that we transform that is we know what the mass of the droplet is if we assume that the droplet is spherical. Um, for a spherical droplet, the mass of that droplet is 4 thirds pi times the radius of that droplet cubed times the density of liquid water. And so, using these two bits of information, we can get the, the uh, change in the amount of uh, Gibbs free energy that's available for the condensation process um, is equal to 4 thirds pi r cubed rho L times the r sub Vt times the natural log of the saturation vapor pressure at supersaturated conditions divided by the saturation vapor pressure. Um, but, so this is the total amount of energy that the system has that's available to uh, actually create the surface area, um, but it's actually ignoring the, so the surface area, the energy required to do the surface area of the droplet. So if we look at the actual change of the uh, droplet and the water vapor, uh, the change in the Gibbs free energy for the system um, is we have a surface area energy. Uh, 4 pi r squared is the surface area of a sphere. And uh, sigma, in this case, is the surface tension of the droplet. The larger the surface tension, the more energy is required to create the interface between the droplet and the uh, atmosphere. And so we have the surface, this is the energy required to create the surface area. And this is the non-equilibrium energy that's actually available for condensation. And delta G is the net increase in the energy of the system due to the formation of the droplet. So the growth of the droplet causes an increase in the uh, surface area gives free energy. And the um, condensation uh, causes a decrease uh, in the Gibbs free energy of the vapor. So essentially the excess energy that was available in the Gibbs free energy of the vapor is being used to create surface area energy. And so for a given supersaturation, E sub SS, how large will a droplet be able to grow uh, to reach equilibrium? So it starts off in a non-equilibrium situation and the, as the Gibbs free energy of the water vapor decreases and the surface area energy of uh, the droplet increases, eventually um, you're going to have an um, equilibrium point. And that equilibrium is going to occur at the inflection point of this function. And recall from calculus that in order to calculate the inflection point of a function, you need to take the derivative of it. And in this case, we're going to take the derivative of uh, the net uh, 
increase of the Gibbs free energy of the system uh, with respect to R, the radius of the droplet. Um, and we're going to set that equal to zero. And then we can solve for that critical radius uh, when the system will actually reach equilibrium. So if we take the derivative of the net Gibbs free energy function, um, the derivative of this first term with respect to R is going to be 8 pi R uh, times uh, the surface tension. And the derivative of the second term with respect to R is just 4 pi R squared times the density of the liquid water times R sub BT times the natural log of E sub SS over E sub S. So we set that equal to zero and we solve for R. And we define this as our critical radius, R star, um, lowercase r, to differentiate it from the, um, specific, the, uh, the universal gas constant. And that's going to be equal to 2 sigma over rho L r sub v t times the natural log of e sub s s over e sub s. And we're going to define uh, capital S as the supersaturation ratio. Now we have to be careful because we've already used this variable for entropy. Um, and so you have to look at the equation to get the context of what variable we would actually be using in this case. And so this is defined as the uh, actual vapor pressure, in this case the supersaturation vapor pressure, defined by the uh, vapor, saturation vapor pressure. And if we make that substitution, then the critical radius of our droplet at equilibrium will be 2 sigma over rho L times R sub V T and the natural log of the uh, saturation, supersaturation ratio.